I'm in studio with the Admiral, Bill Stubblefield, two-star. Good morning again, Rob. Great to be here. And a former editor of the Journal, currently, she does everything for hospice, <laughs> including fundraising. Thank you. Windows. <laughs> She has people to her house. And yeah. and the bathrooms. bathrooms she does too. the bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. and Maria Lawrence, an all-star. Good morning. Good to, Good to be here. Any more weddings coming up or anything like that, Maria? No, no. All in done? fact, I, I was going to um, um, make note to uh, Paul Espinosa. He had uh, a similar event. His daughter was married just last month, maybe. Um and, you know, same venue as my daughter's, um, same photographer, same um, videographer. So it looked very similar. Mm -hmm. um, fireworks, same fire. Well, I don't know the same fireworks, but no tattoos. No tattoos. No tattoos. <laughs> so there was that. Sans tattoo. <clears throat> you may have heard of uh, some uh, labor strife yeah. around the VA medical centers, including the one here in Martinsburg. And we are speaking currently now with Jack Tennant, a U.S. Navy veteran and a VA center nurse who joins us via telephone. Jack, good morning. You're on with Rob, Bill, and Maria. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Jack, what are the main issues between the nurses and the VA at the moment? Uh, the main issues are primarily about flexible scheduling and work-life balance. Flexible scheduling and work-life balance. Okay. Yeah. When did these issues arise? Uh, well, they've been ongoing for, for quite some time. Flexible scheduling is something that, is, that has been um, developed in, in nursing because nurses are, are providing 24-7 care at the bedside, and, but we also have family members and lives that we need to take care of outside of work. And that, that's really difficult to do when... To, to manage caring for a family, tending to your own personal uh, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, taking family members to for their appointments and such. And so the private sector has has caught on to this, and they have used this uh, method of flexible scheduling to recruit and also to retain nurses. And uh, so we are just trying to keep up with the private sector because we are seeing nurses uh, that are leaving the organization to go to facilities that have flexible scheduling and we love caring for veterans and uh, but we also need to be able to take care of ourselves and we need a work-life balance to do that and we have tried to persuade the organization to uh, <clears throat> to allow us to do that and uh, they have not gotten the message thus far jack is this a coordinated nationwide effort as a matter of fact, it is. Uh, after during COVID and after COVID, uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs noticed a mass exodus of healthcare uh, providers, doctors, nurses, social workers, and and, and across the board of uh, of healthcare providers leaving the organization uh, because uh, COVID COVID was was very was very hard. It put an enormous strain on healthcare across the nation. And people who suffered great uh, moral injury uh, as a result of that, you know, being struggling, trying to take care of their professional obligations as care providers uh, while also trying to care for their families. So many people started leaving healthcare as a whole. So the, the Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs coordinated a program called Reboot. And part of Reboot was, was looking at what can we do to help uh, retain our qualified employees. I mean, the VA invested an enormous amount of money in a registered nurse, for example. The VA invests $60,000 in one registered nurse uh, to, to recruit and to train a, a, a registered nurse. And that's, just, that's before they even get to the floor. And then once they get to the floor, there's some additional training. And then you have the issue of all this, all this talent walking out the door. So that's, that's what's led to this uh, flexible scheduling. Yeah. Jack, you use the term moral injury. What do you mean yep. by moral injury? Well, moral injury has, has a lot. It stems from 
work-related stress. And, uh, and it's not just that my job is stressful. You know, we as, as healthcare providers are, are dealing with, with human lives. And, and we know the standards of care that, that should be given to all peoples. And, and when workload is, is such that you have to prioritize and reprioritize and reprioritize again, something inevitably falls through the cracks. And it is those things that fall through the cracks that keep this nurse and every other nurse that I know awake at night. We lament, we, we grieve over not being able to provide the quality of care that we were number one trained to, to provide. You know, number two, you know, we're, we're licensed and obligated to provide this care. And number three, you know, our, our basic level of humanity dictates that people deserve this kind of care. So when we're not able to give that, it causes us great distress or the, 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 new, the newly coined term is moral injury. A term I'd not heard before. Uh, the, uh, the government, federal government has been uh, very progressive in the use of flex time. Uh, why is the VA making an exception and not allowing flex time? Well, the secretary of the VA has embraced it. As a matter of fact, I was was at a meeting in uh, at DuPont Circle, uh, where we uh, on our lunch break we went over in front of VA central office and we did an in- informational picket, which is exactly what what we did. Um, in your opening, I, I don't know that you used the word strike or not, but I need to be very clear that we are not allowed to strike, but we can hold informational pickets, and we held an informational picket in front of VA central office, and and the secretary. Um, was out briefly uh, during that and uh, on his lunch. And so afterwards, he reached out to our national leadership and asked if he could come and, and, and talk to us at our hotel in DuPont Circle. <laughs> and um, Mr. McDonough came over, and, uh, and we talked about Reboot, and, and he, supports, he supports flexible scheduling. However, he has left... He has left um, Discretion up to the local facility directors as to when, how, and if it has been uh, implemented. And for the record, you know, we we fought uh, and we persuaded medical center leadership um, to do a pilot uh, in one of our IC, in our ICU intensive care unit. And and quite frankly, I, I almost believe that they hoped it wouldn't work, but it worked. Not only did it work. You know, it worked. It worked as well as could be reasonably be expected. It has improved uh, employee satisfaction. It has reduced moral injury. It has uh, reduced uh, callouts from the you know, nurses calling in for for sick leave or to take care of family matters, because you know, using flexible scheduling has has permitted nurses to schedule their life around their work. So, um, Jack, this is Maria Lawrenson. I just wanted to to clarify because I was trying to understand reading the the story in the journal yesterday. Um, they were using a seventy two eighty formula. So, yeah. is this explain that and how that would work specifically, or is it more flexible person by person? You couldn't do that person by person, right? Well, what 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 seventy two for eighty is 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 what's being what was implemented in our intensive care unit. Okay. Um, and that is where uh, we, we work on a two-week pay period, uh, which would normally be 80 hours. And with 72 for 80, the nurse will work 72 hours, get paid for 72 hours, but qualify for full-time benefits as an 80-hour employee. Now, other, other areas of nursing, uh, for example, in our outpatient clinics, um, that would not work because they don't work 12-hour shifts. They, they work an eight-hour shift. 
So we, we have an alternate or flexible work schedule that is adaptable to every setting in healthcare, uh, particularly in um, our outpatient clinics. We are doing um, uh, nines and an eight. So six nine-hour shifts and one eight-hour shift, I believe uh, that, that equals 80 hours. And so what happens in a two-week period, and what happens is every other week, a nurse will have an extra a third day off. So that may be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or a Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, you know, whatever. And that, that, that occurs on a rotating basis so that it's fair and equitable to, uh, to all nurses. Another option is, um, is four 10-hour days. Um, but that, that, is, that is something that, uh, that our leadership is vehemently opposed to at this time. But we're, we're certainly hopeful and even prayerful that they will see the light someday. And just to clarify then, you're talking about not pay. It's just time. So somebody's working 72 hours. They're not getting paid for 80 hours. They're getting the benefits associated with 80 hours, correct? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Now, let me share this with you. You know, some of the private sector facilities, you know, are, are, are so generous that, that they, and they recognize the benefit and the investment and the dividends that it pays in nurses, you know, in, in nurse retention, uh, is that they, they're allowing nurses to work 72 hours, paying them for 80 hours, you know, and, and all the other benefits that go along with it. Now, you know, I, the VA has, has certainly not that progressive as of yet. Jack, uh, this is Rob once again. Is this disagreement something that can be settled locally? For instance, if the nurses at the Martinsburg VA are happy with whatever arrangement they, they can come to, then then they're fine and you let the, the VA center in St. Louis deal with their own issues? Or does this have to be a nationwide all are in or, or nobody's in deal? Well, that's one thing that our that our national leadership, uh, the National Nurses United, which is uh, falls under the umbrella organization of the National Nurses Organizing Committee, uh, that we're championing for that. Uh, currently, uh, NNU National Nurses United is in 23 VAs across the nation, and Mar- and Martinsburg seems to be lagging behind that. Uh, I think we're like one of four facilities out of the 23 that has not embraced this in in all clinical settings so so does that mean that I, i'm not sure I, I know what the answer is to my question then does that mean you can settle locally or it has to be nationally yes we we can settle locally. you can settle we locally. Can, we can can settle this locally and and we believe it'll it'll happen and one of the the good faith efforts that that we have put forth is is we have developed schedules for each and every setting to show to leadership how this will work and how you know how this can work and how it will work so, so but we're, we're not making huge strides as of yet has there been any slowdown in the work that you do currently at the va medical center over this dispute any any non-working going on or striking or picketing of any sort uh there there that we're we are not allowed to strike uh we would not do that um because of uh, our contract doesn't permit it. So what real leverage do you have to try to get an agreement accomplished? Well, our informational picket last uh, Friday was uh, was a, another another step. You know, prior to this, we um, had certainly uh, tried to negotiate uh, with with leadership about it, and they didn't seem to think that it was it was important to nurses. So we did a survey. Um, of, of nurses working in, in, in the various settings. And, and that came out with a resounding, uh, yes, that it is very important. You know, we furnished, uh, we created a QR code that um, nurses could, see, could scan and uh, to um, exercise their voice. And that voice was sent via email to our nurse executive, our facility director, and the vision or network director, and uh, and again, you know, the it was it was pretty resounding, you know, that this is very important to nurse nursing. So, and those are just some of the steps that that we have done, and um, our last step up to this point 
has been um, the information will pick it. Uh, Jack, in most federal agencies, the head of the agency or the department, head of the agency or department sets a tone for what has been done. Uh, you made the statement earlier that the Secretary of uh, Veterans Affairs was in favor of flexi time. Then why do the individual hospitals go against what is being proposed by the Secretary of, v, uh, of Veterans Affairs? Well, my best, my best guess would be that it was it was a discretionary decision for each facility to take up. Yes, but generally the uh, uh, the head of the, uh, various parts of the agency uh, falls in lockstep with that of the head of the agency. But what you're telling me, this is not the case in the VA, at least not in terms of the the flex of time issue. Well, again, you know, I would. Um, suggest that or say that uh, that it's still a discretionary matter and you know i really i really can't speak any any further to that um you know but um you know i will say that um uh our our vision director is aware of it or network director uh is aware of it and um and and in our meeting with the secretary in dc it was also made aware uh, that, uh, that that Martinsburg is one of the 23 VAs that has not yet embraced this. Uh, we went back and had a, uh, a panel discussion with the Biden administration uh, and OPM, um, Office of Personal Management, and uh, there was a couple other agencies there, and, and where we also voiced this concern to them, and, and so we still have not made any progress in, in that direction. So Jack, understanding that, um, that well, uh, satisfied employees make better employees. And clearly there's an issue here. Um, nurses, uh, perhaps are not as satisfied as they could be. How does that impact patient care? I mean, do you feel like there's any diminishing, um, amount of of care being offered to the patients at the VA center well I, I I certainly do not have data to support that and 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 also knowing you know my my own personal morals and beliefs and and that of my of my peers you know I think we do our level best you know to to provide the care that uh, that we can you know within within the um, the constraints that we're working under you know, there, 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 are, there are things that, you know, that that must be done, that have to be done, you know, and uh, and then there, you know, there may be some some nicer things that, you know, that, that could be done, and not, you know, and I'm not I'm not committed to weighing in on on anything slipping through the cracks because, again, you know, I have to lay my head down on the pillow at night as do my colleagues, and I think that we really do our level best, you know, could could we do a little better if if we had if we had, you know, more staff, could we do a little better, you know, if, um, if we had more time to do things because we weren't juggling, you know, assignments that were so heavy, you know, there's, uh, some California nurses association and the state of California has developed nurse staffing ratios, uh, which has, has limited the number of patients, any nurse in any given setting is is providing care to and uh and, and that is is really something that um if the VA really wanted to be super progressive that would be something you know that they would they would embrace and it certainly has not been for lack of effort you know uh there there have been bills um by um a senator Takano um from California and there's several others and and our support is growing for it and I think it's made it through you know, it, it's making its way through the House, but it still doesn't have full support. Uh, and, and the Senate is a no-go at this point in time. But, you know, again, National Nurses United is, is on the forefront, you know, of championing this cause to uh, to help us uh, provide the best level of care that we can do that. And we can certainly do that when, when we have the right mix of patients and, to nurses you know, in that ratio. What percentage of your employees, Jack, of your nurses belong to a 
I, am I correct in calling this a union? It's a union, yes, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So what so, percentage uh, of your staff? So uh, the VA is uh, like, and I suppose like most federal agencies, is is a right right to work, uh, which means that, and maybe that's not the right term, but, but it basically means that all employees, all nurses, all registered nurses, uh, at uh, in, within the institution are are entitled to union representation uh, without paying dues. Now many do pay new pay dues, and and right now we're pretty close to you know fifty percent, maybe fifty two percent of of the bargaining unit here at Martinsburg that are dues paying members. Um, so. Uh, I hope that answers your question. How many nurses work at the Martinsburg VA, Jack? Uh, right around 400. I don't have an exact count, but I know that, uh, that it's, it's, it's around 400. That's a pretty large number. And do yeah. the pharmacists there or any of the other staff that aren't physicians, do they have similar issues right now going on with their demands? Well, and it's uh, I'm glad to ask that question uh, because all of, all of health care, and anyone, anyone who is dealing directly with patients, uh, flexible scheduling is something that could readily be adapted, you know, to, to multiple disciplines, uh, to physicians, uh, pharmacists, social workers, occupational therapists, physical therapists. It, it, could all, it could all be developed, you know, to support their work-life balance, too. Uh, Jack, uh, uh, is, but, yeah, but real quick, Bill, yeah, as a follow-up, are are they involved with your cause here as well, or right now are they sitting this one out to see how it goes, or do they just not have any concerns? Well, they have great concerns, but I think they're they're re they're they're really waiting for the precedent to be set, you know, and that's my argument as well, you know, and uh, because we do work, here, they are represented. Other allied healthcare professionals are represented at Martinsburg by NIFI. Uh, which is an acronym that escapes me at the very moment, uh, and, and NAGE is another one, National Alliance of Government Employees, um, are the three unions primarily in, in force here at Martinsburg, and, and they are waiting for the precedent to be set. But they, yeah, we walk lockstep as, as often as we can on, on patient care issues, and, uh, and we come together uh, as a uniform front to, to champion for causes that, uh, that affect us all. And, and and first and foremost are affecting veterans. Two minutes, Bill. Yeah. Uh, Jack, are you, in terms of nurses at uh, Martinsburg VA, are you fully staffed? Are you up to quota? Well, I guess that depends on who you talk to. No, I'm talking about there should be a, a funding and a, and a level, level everybody agrees to. Are you up to that particular level? Well, again, we all don't agree. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. So, uh, you know, the, the, the VA nationally uh, is, is facing an enormous budget deficit uh, that was brought about by multifactorial of causes. I think the Mission Act contributed pretty significantly to it. The Mission Act is something that allowed veterans to pursue health care outside of the VA, and um, which if you know, we have in, in our geographical area here at Martinsburg, we serve veterans as far north as Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, as far south and beyond of, of Stanton, Virginia, as far east as like Germantown, Maryland, in that general area, as far west as the Potomac Highlands, Franklin, West Virginia, Moorefield, and, and those areas. So what the Mission Act did for these folks is rather than driving all the way to Martinsburg for a dental appointment, they could go to a local dentist and um, uh, or, you know, if they needed a chest X-ray, they could go to a local hospital and get a chest X-ray or whatever the procedure was. It afforded them the opportunity to go locally to get the care rather than driving all the way to Martinsburg. Jack. And one of the things that that did is the money that, that pays those bills comes out of the VA budget. Got it. Jack, on that note, I've got to jump in because we are out of time. I thank you for yours and wish you the best in continuing negotiations. Thank you very much, and thank you for your time. Thank you for the information. Good Thanks, stuff. Jack.